Hey guys, this is Mandela Man. Uh, it's been a long time since I made some videos, but I'm gonna come at you guys with uh, a pretty cool Twin Peaks theory video uh, either tonight or tomorrow. But uh, I was just flipping through the news right now and I found something and I, I just had to share it with you guys because uh, so many people gave me hell over the spelling of this word. And this is proof of the old spelling from where I'm from. Okay? So we'll take a look at that, you guys. <clears throat> okay. As you see here, I'm watching the news. And this comes on the screen. Let's see. You see that spelling? And this is in reference, I believe, to a roller derby girl and her nickname. So even though reality was able to overwrite all the bananas in history, it wasn't able to erase this lady's uh, special nickname that she had in the roller derby, I believe. So I'm going to roll that back a little bit and we'll watch the clip and then we'll end this video. Pretty good. And it knows. You broken snot? I, I didn't have the whole clip, so this is. I just turned to this channel. I was lucky to just grab it, but we'll watch it Zips. for a minute. Cause, uh, <clears throat> you broken schnozzes. The most famous is Banana Nose. <laughs> Then in the late 1960s, she grabs the attention of a certain eight-year-old boy. It was a Saturday morning, and all of a sudden I see this bizarre sport. Tickets up. How Jim becomes a super fan. And then Anne's heir. Next. But first, our strange inheritance quiz question. Real-life roller derby star Judy Arnold was the stunt double for which actress in the 1972 film? Kansas City Bomber, Sigourney Weaver, Anne Margaret, or Raquel Welch? The answer after the break. Okay, well, I could roll through the break. Uh, it's always good to watch these things around when we catch effects because there could be other clues in what we're watching sometimes. So I'm going to play the rest of this little clip about the roller derby. Search and get free Carfax reports at the all-new Carfax.com. So which actress used Judy Arnold for her stunt double in the 1972 film Kansas City Bomber? It's Raquel Welch. Judy wore a brunette wig to do Raquel's action scenes. By the late 1960s, Ann Calvello has been burning up the roller derby track for two decades. Jim Fitzpatrick is a young boy watching TV when he first sets eyes on the demon of the derby. It was 1968. Those of us in London. Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, and it was a Saturday morning, and they had the funeral procession, oh, which was airing on all the channels. The only alternative for a sports crazy kid. An independent TV station airing a raucous bout. They were skating at this wild, blinding speed, hitting each other, banging each other, people are falling. He's hooked and unable to avert his eyes from the veteran Vixen with the bod of a 25-year-old. His strange inheritance contains the proof. These are her... Uh, shorts while she was on the Midwest Pioneers, and she was already at this point 41 years of age. They're very, very, very small. If you got it, flaunt it, the saying goes. And Anne does. I wear hot pants. I mean, at 42 years old, people say you should wear hot pants. But they look, when you're my age, you should look so good in hot pants. As Jim grows up, he doesn't outgrow his roller derby fascination. He takes up skating himself, and after high school, scores a job on the track crew with the hometown Bay Bombers. 
It's a skate in the door. One night I walk into the Oak Auditorium and the owner comes over to me and then he goes, you're skating tonight. That's when I went, holy crap, am I ready for this? Tim goes on to skate with teams across the U.S. in Buenos Aires and on a U.S. All-Star team in Japan. I pursued my dream. You were too determined. Yeah. But after five years, injuries forced Jim to switch jobs to part-time ref. Next thing he knows, he's facing off with Ann Calvello, now 56 years old and swinging a handbag. She grabbed the purse, took the strap, she swung it around, and she nailed me on the side of the head. In time, that lump on Jim's head will get replaced with a soft spot in his heart. For a battered and aging roller derby queen, still busting chops, but worried about fading away. That's next. I can't believe I'm doing this. Here's another. Okay, you guys heard it here first. Derby stars of the 70s was related to what more famous figure? This lady. Boxing uh, champ Sugar Ray Robinson. Former first lady Michelle Robinson Obama. Or baseball great Jackie Robinson. The answer when we return. Okay. Uh, and that question was uh, talking about Obama. And you said I saw the Bobby Kennedy reference, right? So this lady's right here. She, She's basically uh, proof of the way banana was spelled from our reality. You can't erase her nickname. Here's another quiz question for you. Ronnie Robinson, one of the top roller derby stars of the 70s, was related to what more famous figure? Boxing champ Sugar Ray Robinson? Former first lady Michelle Robinson Obama? Or baseball great Jackie Robinson? The answer when we return. Okay, we'll roll through the commercial. But you guys see what I'm talking about, right? You could look this lady up now uh, from the roller derby, and she'll be proof of the way bananas were spelled. <clears throat> so, who was roller derby star Ronnie Robinson's famous relative? It's A. His dad was boxing champ Sugar Ray Robinson. By the mid-1990s, Jim Fitzpatrick has left behind his days as a pro roller derby skater. The profession, he says, isn't what it once was. The sport has gone through so many ups and downs. The traditional roller derby was a totally legitimate game, but there have been other people that have come along and they've just taken it in a whole bizarre direction. Just wait till you see these skaters take on the 14-foot high wall of death. I've seen some that have had a wall of death. He's going up to the rail. He's going up to the rail. An alligator pit. I can't believe we're here tonight. The changes don't seem to bother Annie Calvella. Even if she nears 70, she's still selling those tickets. They want all the young girls, you know, with the nice figures. But I don't have a bad figure. And they're real. What's all too real? The off-track life of an aging roller derby demon who never remarries, never saves money, and makes ends meet pushing carts and bagging groceries at the Safeway. It's around this time that Jim runs into Anne at a roller derby reunion. He's compiling a book about the history of the sport. I kind of put it together for just some of the skaters as a keepsake. I started asking her questions for my book. Over a string of long interviews and sharing stories, they become close friends. So close that Jim's by her side when Anne learns she has eye cancer. Then it spreads to her liver. Anne confides to Jim her worry that she'll be totally forgotten once she's gone and her wish for one last night in the spotlight. Oh, she really wanted to see yeah, now. And she was 70 years old, and I really yeah. thought that this is not a good thing to do. In August 2000, Anne Calvello skates before cheering roller derby fans one last time. She doesn't take you know what. And there they go. Anne Calvello puts Logue up into the rail. And look at her go. One lap to go. If she gets there first, she's going to win this thing. 
That red jersey is the last thing Ann Calvella places in her lifelong collection of roller derby memorabilia. I'm going to miss all you guys. And then she delights Jim by announcing she's leaving much of it to him when she dies. We know them our own rules. It's on March 14, 2006. Ann Calvello hangs up her skates for good, succumbing to cancer at age 76. I remember going over to her apartment, and it was a sad day. And when I saw what I had, I was blown away by it. Jim gathers up his strange inheritance. Trophies, pennants, fan letters, skates, knee pads, jerseys, and more. This is the Madison Square Gardens program for the first Ollie Frazier fight. They have a section in here on other great athletes that performed in the garden. And sure enough... It's Anne. Yeah, two pictures of Anne. So she represented roller derby. And then this is uh, after she had some real knee problems and she was starting to wear a special brace. This is touching. Anne saved all her fan mail. I, I even have a lot of her letters when people were wishing her to recover after the brain tumor surgery. Stuff any roller derby fan would covet. Jim, you ever have any of this stuff appraised? Not really appraised, but what I have noticed over the years, I've seen people sell items on eBay. There was one jersey that was sold for about $3,000. I think Anne is just as much, if not more, of a star, so she might go for more. But as you're about to see, Jim has another idea for his strange inheritance. One he'll try out in his new position as general manager of the storied San Francisco Bay Bombers. Coming up, how do you bring back roller derby's glory days? It won't be easy. I promised my mom I'd wear these. What's your strange inheritance story? We'd love to tell it. Send me an email or go to our website, strangeinheritance.com. Well, anyway, guys, that's uh, Ann Calvello, Banana Ann Calvello. And even though it showed more memorabilia, I didn't really see any uh, other spellings of banana around. Uh, it'd be interesting if he sells some of the stuff online, if somebody could uh, actually buy something of hers that has the banana spelling, that would be really interesting. Uh, but one, I'm going to roll it back one more time just so you guys see what I see. Is you know, so I'm not uh, pulling your leg. That's banana. Get right up on it. With two ends at the end. Okay, that's what I remember from my reality. Okay, and this is Mandela Man. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.